Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are gonna unbox, assemble, and test a new Tron XY. Yep. And here's my little helping helperton. Hey. Henry. And my name's Mike. Yep, yeah, Henry. That's me. The reason I got this printer is because I wanted a small, quiet, easy to use printer for me and my son that we can keep up in the house yeah. and not have to go downstairs to our printing farm. First thing out of the box is a piece of paper with some scribble dibble on it and a manual. It's a pretty nice looking manual, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Why don't you go ahead and take a look through that. All right, so here's what we got. This is a Tron XY, XY dash two pro x y two dash pro that's what it is oh look what we got here i think this is an extra or a spare hot end okay we got a uh, standard issue thumb drive a cheapo thumb drive with a sd card in there micro sd we also have a uh, usb cable and then there's a uh, mechanical micro switch and a push type uh probably three millimeter fitting got a uh, spool of filament in here and we got a bag full of goodies here. We got all your standard tools. We got some zip ties. We got some twist lock uh, nuts for the uh, extruded aluminum. All right, let's, let's get it out of the box. Oh, nice big scraper. Oh, mm. yeah. This is our spool holder. Yay. So we got the spoon. And the I'll gantry comes of... out. It's all pre-assembled. Nice look. It's the uh, 20 by 40 millimeter extruded aluminum, V slot aluminum. Most of this looks like a clone to me of this of the Creality components. There's one big difference I see here, and uh, we have a, a, a serial type adapter, if you will, for all the connections. So a one point plug-in for everything on the uh, gantry. All right, very interesting. Now here's what I. What really piqued my interest about this, and that's a flexible bed. So after you're printing, you unclip this from your bed, you pull your print up, and pop it right off. Da, 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 da. All right, here's the rest of the printer. We got the bed and the bed frame. Dad, and that just peels right off the bottom. Here's the bottom. Got the control unit in here, power source here. It's all built right into the frame, which I love. Not having a separate head unit for the controller seems like a great idea to me. So getting back to why we chose this as our latest addition to the household, I wanted something a little bit smaller than say our CR10 and a little bigger than our Ender 2. We looked at the Ender 3, which I think this is a good comparison to, the reason I chose this over the Ender 3 is because the Ender 3 doesn't have, well, I don't think they have this, but it's not just this. Also, this has auto bed leveling built right in. No modifications necessary. So it's got a, it's got a little sensor there, some kind of proximity sensor, maybe a hall effect. And that's going to go around and probe the bed. And that's going directly on the aluminum bed, so there's no glass in between. So this thing should heat up pretty quick. And I think the size is perfect for around the house type of projects. Things like, I want to fix uh, a chair leg. I'll print that. Whatever little thing breaks around the house, that's going to get printed right here. Oh, look at that, Henry. See what that is there? That's the control screen, the touch screen interface. Put this thing together and try it out. Sure. All right. Hey! hey. In unboxing. I noticed a couple things right away that I'm not too crazy about. One is these rollers, man, are they tight. So we're gonna have to loosen those up and I assume they just have the little cam nuts. And let's see if we can get in there and see those. Right in there, those little cam nuts. You just turn those with the wrench and those will loosen or tighten. You don't want anything loose, obviously, but you want these things to be snug, but free moving. If you have a lot of bind on them, you're putting a lot of extra load on your on your Z motor, which is right here. And uh, these little guys don't like a lot of extra load. Um, another thing I noticed is, let's see if we can check that out right there. Boom! You see that? 
the bolt heads on that coupler, that little misalignment coupler there, or flex coupler, I guess, I'm actually hitting the back side of this stamped housing here, which I think of the ones I saw online, that was 3D printed, so there must have been the earlier versions or the prototypes, and it is actually hitting, so gonna have to do some clearancing in there or try to adjust where they've mounted this box. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah. Do you concur, Dr. Henry? Yes. All right, what else we got? These are, these are rolling a little freer, but still very tight. I'm gonna make sure the belt isn't too tight. The belt's got, the belt feels good. You got a little bit of slack in there. All right, ready to do some surgery? Yay. All right, you're the manual guy. Tell us how to do it. I guess we'll try doing a uh, right here test print with the filament that came with it. Why not? So um, 25 kilograms? Yep, yeah, 25 kilograms. That's what they gave you. All right, fine. Cool. I'm sure it's going to come with all kinds of tools. Nice, simple little Allen keys in there. Get yourself a nice set of T handles. Okay, there we go. Ah, oh, yeah, look at that. Oh. And it is very loose. So, they obviously haven't run these things in or tested them before shipping. Sharp objects away from the child. And while you're working on that, I think I'll set up the gantry. Hearing the instructions, yaddy yaddy, blah blah blah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Hmm. Okay, boom, we got it. Chinese screwdrivers there. Come from completely different manufacturers, but there you go. Nuts and bolts. That's for our cam, cam nuts for adjusting the looseness and or tightness of our bed and hot end, the moving hot end. As you can see right there, that guy right in there, that's your cam nut there. Right now that feels pretty good. I might take a little bit of tension off that, a little friction off, and then right in there, I'll have to adjust that one. And that one right there. So that this, these wheels right now, man, I can't even budge them. I got them. All right, good job. They twist lock into place. All right, buddy, I'm um, gonna need your help on this next part. Here, we're gonna do this. We're gonna set this up on its side. Yep, and there are threads in there. I can confirm there are indeed threads already in there. Watch your face parts. <clears throat> I would defend myself with this. Go, 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 go. Look at that. Really, really well done instructions. Impressive. Come on, do it. All right, good job. And plug in to the gantry here. That. Okay, print bed. Got a flexible print bed. And hopefully it proves to make all our dreams come true, right? Mm -hmm. And we're scraping stuff off your little, your little ender, trying to lose your fingers. Yeah. Everything's put together. I want to make a couple little tweaks. I'm going to adjust this gantry so that it will actually move. Voila. Yeah. Did you see a squirrel? Did it grab your attention. Seriously, Dad. That indeed is one extra hot end. All right, let's uh, let's run it through, see what we get. Print tool system. Let's look at tools. Offset Z, stop, fan, back, level. Ooh, let's go into level. Auto. So now the sensor is going to go and probe the bed on a grid. No. Nope. Generally what you want to do here is do a, a proper leveling and the way I do this is kind of the standard method of a sheet of paper, put it in there, move the thing around to the four adjustment points, bring it up till that there's just a little bit of drag between the print surface and the bottom of your print nozzle. And once you feel a little friction there, stop adjusting the bed up. Move on to the X4, do it again, that should level it out pretty good. Then after that, using this automatic leveling system, creates a mesh in the computer that it is then going to build on. 
thing you might want to watch out for is make sure your filament isn't running through a loop of its own. Make sure it's not tangled. Usually when I put on a spool, I'll just pull out about 10 feet of it or so and make sure it isn't tangling. That way, three hours later, in the middle of my print, when I'm not paying attention, I don't have to worry about this tangling up and killing my print. Go. Aha, G code files. I have a dinosaur, an elephant, and an octopus. Yeah, All octopus. Right. Let's pass Dad, if this messes up, don't blame it on me because I was the one who was trying to fix it. Oh, Henry, we're live. So, conclusions. We have a $200 printer we got on Amazon. We got it in one day. We printed this part after three days of trying to get it to work. What we found was um, the first print failure was due to a broken filament that broke in the extruder. There is a short, there is a feed detector on this, but it's a mechanical limit switch, and it doesn't know that the feed, that the, that the, the that the, filament actually broke and is not feeding. All it knows is that it's in there. So it's a run out detector. If your filament runs out of its spool and fully goes through that limit switch, it opens its circuit and tells the computer, stop, we got a problem. That didn't happen because it didn't run out. It just broke in the extruder. It's all jammed up and gnarly. All we did was pull it out, reinsert it, and away it went, no problem. Um, until <laughs> the next problem. The next problem, the power cord. Yeah, it was too loose and... The actual connections, the contacts in the plug on the power cord on the, uh, I guess you'd call this the uh, female end of the power cord going into the back of the printer, it was loose. And as the printer was running, it just vibrated enough or whatever to and lose connection and shut down. Yeah. How many times did that happen? Like a lot. Yeah. Like several times. several times. So what we do, fix, I went in and just plugged in a standard computer power cord, problem solved. Yeah, problem solved. Good quality That's part. It. So we've got two failed parts on this printer right out of the box. Print bed, which is ruined because the first print couldn't come off. Um, well, we did get it off. We, but... we did get it off, but it took some of the print bed with, yeah. with the print. Print quality, not bad. A little stringy here and there. Um, I know this is going to be really difficult to see anything in there. Good overhang, real good overhang quality there. It's almost flawless. So, what are your conclusions? What are your thoughts? Well, about how the print stuck to the front bed. Whoops! <laughs> <laughs> so, about what again? <laughs> the printer. <laughs> about the 3D about printer. The, about, Tron XY. About XY2 the, Pro. $200 on Amazon right now. About the print sticking to the print bed. Mm. So, that's a big, that's a big, big sad. Me and Daddy don't know why it happened, right? Don't know why. Well, no. Uh, there's two things. No, I, I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, me neither. I, I can't imagine why, why the product could actually delaminate the way it did on the very first print. It does recommend that you pull them off when the bed is still warm, but even cold, and you should be able to pull the prints off without it removing the surface of the print bed. Just my two cents. Anything else? Well, I don't know why 
the filament broke inside the extruder, but... Yeah, we don't know. Happened. We just reinserted it and away it went, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, recommend or not recommend? I'm going to go at this price point and all the stuff that you get in this printer, I'm going to go with a big hairy thumbs up. How about you? Well, there you go. That's a scientific consensus.